Yeah, we got quick audio issues. I'm ready to go. I just fought under three weeks ago. I'm not injured. Might as well. I know you were frustrated after that one, right? I mean, it was, that was pretty clear. I mean, were there any lessons that you took out of that? Yeah, I was frustrated. I think anybody's frustrated in a fight that they feel they won, but what lessons should I take? I mean, I, I tried my best to finish him. Latifi's extremely tough, man. I, I poured it on him in round two, and he, I didn't get him out of there. There's nothing that there's no lesson for me to take. You know, I, could, I guess you want me to say, don't leave it in the hands of the judges. Well, trust me, my goal is never to leave it in the hands of the judges, but sometimes it takes more than 15 minutes to simulate and kill one of the best fighters in the world. Yeah. No, definitely not fishing for anything from me. Just curious. But uh, I guess, you know, emotional. I mean, is, is that good or bad? Because it feels like you're walking in with a chip on your shoulder right now. I mean, is that, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? I don't know if I have a chip on my shoulder or if it's good or bad if I do. Look, I'm just, I'm here to fight and get another paycheck back to back. It's nice. And I'm trying to right the ship. I'm coming off of two losses, two really close losses. I could easily be on a, I could easily be on a, a four fight win streak. So I'm, I'm coming in and I, I have to get a win, man. I got to get this monkey off my back and I'd like to do it so that I can enjoy the summer. <laughs> nice. I know you said you want, you're fighting out your contract as well, right? I mean, is that a tough decision to make? I would think you'd, you'd want to, hey, can we renegotiate? Can we get something going? Yeah, they actually renewed my contract before uh, I took this fight. So I didn't expect them to was the thing, but they did. So, I mean, you know how it is. Yeah, I have a new four fight contract, but they can cut you after any loss. My, I'm still not any less on the chopping block. Uh, I got to go in there and I got to go for broke. Does that give you any validation, though, to know that they're like, hey, man, let's, let's give you a new deal? I mean, you're right, they can cut you, but I mean, they gave you a new deal. Does that make you think, oh, they, they believe in me even though I've had these losses? <laughs> I don't care who believes in me and who doesn't believe in me. I'm, I'm, here, I'm here to fight. Ovin St. Pru is a tough opponent. I'm still in shape. I just fought uh, like under three weeks ago. I'm going to be sharp. I'm, I felt great my last fight, honestly. My instincts are going to be there. My reaction time is going to be there. I'm good to go. So I don't need a pat on the back. I don't need validation. I need a win, and that's all I care about. I dig it. Did you stay here the whole time, or what did you do? No, I went back and quarantined for two weeks in Canada, and then it got out of my quarantine the day I could fly back here. Here I am. <laughs> Life's fucking great. Were you able to like work out at all in quarantine or you just kind of hang out in, the, in a hotel room? Or? Okay, so you have to quarantine for up to three nights in one of our neat quarantine hotels in Canada. Um, we got out in one day, our, our test came back early, they COVID test you, and then when the test comes back negative, then you go to your other place of quarantine, so your house or your wherever you live for the duration of the two-week quarantine. So uh, in my case, uh, since I didn't have COVID because I tested negative, I then had to continue quarantining for the rest of the two weeks just in case I spontaneously got COVID or something. So then I was at my apartment that I rent, and uh, that was uh, how I spent two weeks. Nice, interesting. All right, we'll talk about the matchup. You said Ovince is a, is a tough, uh, tough competitor. What, what did you think when this was the name they gave you? Obviously not a full-time heavyweight, so I doubt you were expecting it, but what, what did you think of the matchup? Yeah, you're right. It is out of left field. Uh, OSP wouldn't have thought I'd be fighting him, and Latifi wasn't even a guy I thought of either. You know, I didn't know if he was still going to be fighting at heavyweight or what. So, yeah, I'm getting a lot of just kind of guys I didn't expect, but I would have said yes to anybody. I don't care. I, I'll fight anybody, and they know I'm good for that. I mean, I was dumb enough to fight Cyril Ghosn when six or seven other guys said no to that one. So, yeah, you give me OSP, tough fight for sure. Good veteran, good all-around, wicked submissions, good strikes. The guy's got it all, you know, but I can fight anybody, and no matter who it was, I wanted a quick turnaround. That's what I asked for. I'm not here picking and choosing. OSP's the name, fine. That's just point me at who I got to fight, and I'm just going to fight them. Nice. I guess last thing for me, I mean, obviously just the goal here is to win. You want to get the monkey off your back. You said you don't want to prove anything to anybody or care who supports you. So are there any other goals, like statements you want to make, things you want to accomplish, or is it literally just win so you can go enjoy your vodka? <laughs> 
Yeah, the, state, the statement will be made fight night. I got to go. I got to make a statement, but that statement isn't to everybody. It's, it's just to myself. You're right. I need to get the monkey off my back. I need to win a fight and just know I got a little bit of job security coming off of a win, and then I can enjoy myself a little bit. If they want me to come back soon, I'll probably be okay, but I should probably get back to training once this next quarantine's up, because once I go quarantine again, I won't have trained for well, like a month and a half or something. So yeah, I got to, uh, I'll have to reassess after this one and get myself back in the gym when I can. But this is, uh, this is the singular mission, win the fight. You mentioned the judges and I'm curious if you feel like there needs to be some sort of reform when it comes to judging. Yeah, I mean, I've been asked about this. I think they did, but then nothing changed. Like there's supposed to be 10, eight rounds for more clear cut rounds now. And they, they've kind of reestablished, I think, the scoring system, whereas certain things like control time is supposed to be a change of position. And unless they're doing damage, I believe it, it's not supposed to score as high as before. It doesn't matter. The judges do what they do, which sometimes seems to be uh, ruin people's livelihoods. So I'm not going to sit here and, and say that there should be reform. It's not my job. You know, that's you guys' job or whatever. I'm just supposed to go fight somebody. And I mean, I got to apparently do a better job of making sure it doesn't go to the judges because they hate me. <laughs> Thank you. If you could choose one thing, would you rather judges scored it, say, 10, 9, 10, 8, 10, 7, you use the whole 10 point system, or would you rather open scoring? I understand why there's not open scoring because it is more um, exciting for the crowd and the audience at home. I get that. I think the I think having ten eights for more dominant rounds is probably the way to go. But open scoring would that change anything? Yeah, probably. I, I'm not. Again, I'm I'm not really much of a thinker. I'm not here to. Uh, Try and try and re um, get the entire uh, scoring system or the entire sport <laughs> reformed in these, you know, unheard of as of as of yet ways. I obviously I wish uh, a decision or two would go my way, and they're not. I got to do a better job. Whatever. I I mean I'm just got to go and try and knock guys out. Fair enough. Thank you. Just one quick follow-up. After the win, can you open a bottle with your teeth as well, too? Or is that just, do we have to make sure there's a can? Yeah, I see that they changed that on purpose, didn't they? They didn't want me, <laughs> they didn't want me poking a hole in it just yet. Okay, fair Thank you, sir. Good? Yeah. All right, thanks. Kenny, obviously last time we saw you, it was, it was a pretty uh, incredible fight, but I wonder if it was a, a, a good thing or a bad thing. The result was good, but probably not the c kind of fight you want to have every time. Absolutely not. I think uh, we made a, l a lot of adjustments during training camp, you know, movement, utilizing the feints, fake and feints, and also um, you're trying to be more clever in there. You know, you don't want to walk through all those shots. It's not good for the longevity of my career, but um, I know I did get the victory, and I thank God, you know. What was the feedback from Coach on that one? Because we know he's, he's hard on you guys, but, I mean, it was incredible. You showed a lot of heart and courage, but as you said, you can't fight like that every time. Yeah, absolutely. Like, the feedback, I mean, he was happy I got the secure to win, but um, 
definitely not good in the how I employ the tactics, but it was horrible, you know, with um I think the performance wasn't that good. I just um as we went back we you know worked, you know, I'm gradually growing in this sport and um I just try to like make those wise adjustments as necessary, as fast as possible, um, and I do want to see how it works out in this fight. Nice. I guess the positive, though, I mean, can you take some some character out of that, knowing like, hey, I can be in some really bad spots, and, oh, yeah. and I'm not going to fold. Absolutely. I mean, I always knew I could be in bad spots. I always knew that by myself, even from my childhood upbringing. But um, I do want to fight smarter, you know, and more intelligent, more wise, and be able to like um, um, exhibit those the um, intelligent characteristics that a fighter needs to create a longevity, a long career. So I do want to do that. Nice. This fight, uh, we only heard about it a, a week ago. How, how long ago did you, did you take this fight? I think like uh, three, four weeks. Okay, so you've known for a little bit yes. then. Yes. Okay. Uh, is, is three, four weeks, is that ideal for you or did yeah, you? That's perfect. It's the idea for me because, I mean, I always try to stay in shape, you know, with the, the marathons and stuff I do, I run. So I try to, like, stay healthy, stay ready because I know this sport's – it's not like a season sport like basketball. So like when the call is there, you got to take that advantage of that opportunity. So that's definitely what I wanted to do. I apologize. I didn't. You you run marathons? Oh yeah. It's, I mean, well, <laughs> it's fun for me, you know, running. I rather run than lift weights. So it's it's good for me, you know. But I do have to employ my strength and conditioning. But um, as far as conditioning part, I love running. So how often do you run marathons? Uh, well, I don't like run like in a, a range marathon like for the city. Like I run on my own, like 26, 27, 28 miles, and um, I do it on my own. So you just go out on a day and yeah, just run 26 just miles. Fun. Just have fun, you know. And yeah, it sounds like not fun at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, talk about this matchup, Tanila Marcus. What, what, what do you know about him? I mean, when, when you got the fight, did you know anything about him? He's kind of new to the organization. Yeah, well, I do. I, I knew a little bit about him because I saw his previous fights. With, um, a couple of other guys, I can't remember their names, but um, he's, uh, I think he's a kickboxer and um, jiu-jitsu, you know, he tries to take you down, try to wrestle, submit you, but um, we all, we worked on it. I know I haven't gotten time to display my um, takedown defense, but um, I do have good jiu-jitsu and takedown defense, but um, I want to, wherever the fight goes, I'm willing to take it there, but I just want more more pressure, more aggressiveness, and um, not, not walking through shots, but utilizing my movement and um, try to get him out of there. Whether it takes one, two, three rounds, and I'm ready for everything. Nice. Is there any part of you that kind of wants the fight to go to the ground or wants to be able to show? I mean, I hear sometimes fighters say they want to display, you know, what they're capable of. Do you want to show your ground game? Yeah, I'm willing to show my ground game, but I'm, I'm definitely not – I don't want to give him the easy world to victory, so I, I'm going to try to – I'm going to stuff all the takedowns and try to, like, make him work harder. I mean, the longer it goes, the, the, I know it will be better for me because of my cardio, but I'm eventually going to display all my skills wherever the fight goes. Nice. Last thing for me, obviously you want to be victorious here, but do you have any other goals in this fight? I mean, last fight, it was crazy. I don't think you want to do that, but I think a lot of people knew your name after that one. You know, they kind of like, wow, who is this kid? So, I mean, is there anything you want to accomplish here other than just a victory? Yeah, it was, it was hilarious because I got, I got called a whole bunch of different names. Homer Simpson of MMA. <laughs> but, uh, it was hilarious, but um, I do want to as I said, make those adjustments. The adjustments we made in training camp, I want to like display that on this fight, you know, not just fighting just blindly and dumb like I did. I know the, to the fans is like awesome, but to, for as a fighter, I know I'm better than that. So I do have to make sure I exhibit those, um, this, um, those um, uh, wise adjustments that we did um, perform in the training camp. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you.
Cyril, uh, another main event for you? I mean, are you, are you kind of getting used to this, uh, this headlining life? Yes, that's handsome. That's handsome. I'm, I'm really proud. Yeah. It's, it's added responsibility, right? Added attention. I mean, is that, is that difficult for the preparation? Or? No, not really. I'm, uh, I'm okay with that. And uh, I knew that before, uh, before to be here today. Nice. Talk about your last fight. I mean, obviously a big win for you, but it felt like after your last fight, you were having to explain to everybody like why it was an okay performance. What, what was that like for you? No, no, no. Um, yes, I was comfortable with my performance. Of course, I did well. And everybody know just you know who is this guy. He like to count you and uh, when he touch you down. So yeah, I think I did well. And uh, yeah, some people uh, like to say for this fight, yes, you don't finish the fight, you don't finish the fight. But when you look my former fight, when you look uh, 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 since TKO, I finished uh, almost all my fight. And, uh, and yeah, in the UFC, I finished my first fight, my second fight. Uh, again, Jairzinho too, uh, again, uh, Junior Dos Santos, so I think I did well. Yeah. Was it upsetting to you at all to, to hear some of the negative feedback, knowing, I thought it was a good performance, but some people were critical, so I mean, was that difficult for you to hear? No, 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 I'm strong, I'm a bon gamin, uh, I, pff, no matter. Nice. Then they come to you with this matchup with Volkov, what, what did you think, were you excited by the opportunity, what, what, what did you think? This is a big opportunity, because for me, it's a... Um, I think the biggest challenge I, ha I have in my career, Volkov for me is one of the best of this division. And one, more the challenge is big, and, and more I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. I want to prove because I'm new. I just started the MMA, so I want to prove. And I don't know really myself. And with this challenge, maybe this fight is going to put me to make a, a new version of myself. And maybe I'm going to show you something new. Nice. I like that. At your size, I don't think there's a lot of guys bigger than you, but he is bigger than you. He so does, than me. Is, is that like a weird, you know, sensation or weird feeling to have to train for somebody that's... Yes, exactly. Yes. I did a great camp for that. Exactly. I did a great camp because I had some guys... My opponent in, in my, uh, my sparring partner was... Uh, every, every sparring partner was taller than me. Uh, I had um, this guy from the, from the glory kickboxing, the top 10, uh, Thomas Vosny. And I had also um, uh, from the, the French team of boxing and just qualified for the, for, for the whole epic game, uh, Murad Aliyev, a big guy too. And I have this, this <laughs> I have my bro just over there, Poland big guy, I want to do the promotion because this is the future on the, on the light heavyweight. He's a smart guy, he, he just studied the MMA and the fast learner. That's awesome. Like did it prove challenging for you to make the adjustments to taller guys, or did it feel natural to you? No, 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 that's natural for me. Like I said, I like, I like this sport. I like the contact. I like that. So when some guys is, look like bigger than me, I like that. You understand? That, that's strange. That's, that's a <coughs> strange feeling, but I like that. <laughs> you win this fight. I mean, look, the title picture is kind of crowded right now. There's a lot of contenders. But you win this fight, like you said, you're in the elite of the, of the division. It, 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 does that scare you at all or intimidate you at all? You're still so new in your career to be at the top of the division already. No, this has been something, yes, of course, but uh, it was too fast to feel something. <laughs> no, 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 I, I'm comfortable. I don't know why I'm, uh, I'm not the guy like stressed. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't have the secret. I, I, I can't tell you, but I'm good with that. I'm good. Nice. Last thing for me, clearly the goal here is to be victorious, but do you, ha do you have any goal of, you know, I need to finish this, I need to show people that, like, I am capable of that. Is, is that in your mind a little bit? Every fight, uh, every fight I did, I want to, to make a show for the fans. So, yes, if I can finish the fight before the end with the KO, with the submission like I did, yes, I want to do that for the fans because I like that too. I want to make a show. Have you thought about what it might be like to fight so much earlier than usual? Ah, j'ai pas compris. I'm sorry for my English. Sorry for mine. No, no, no. That's not... <laughs> what, uh, uh, have you thought about what it's going to be like fighting earlier than usually? Because this fight is at like four in the afternoon, four o'clock. Oh, yes. That's a little bit strange. That's true. But um, we arrived there one week ago and we did a good job with that and every time we're training at, at, at this hour so we're going to be good for, for Saturday. So you made special preparation to change? Exactly. We make, I wake up, 
uh, um, I hate my, my breakfast, and after that, we're going to train at, at 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. Cool. Thank you. Yes. Welcome back to Vegas. Thank you. And headlining another um, UFC event. Are you, can you give us a little insight? Are you excited for the taller opponent because you can showcase your jab to the chest, body work, low leg kicks? Yes, of course. I can do everything like you say. And I like that. And yes, everything is possible. Uh, some people say it's, it's, uh, it's complicated to fight a guy taller than, than, uh, than him. Uh, uh, but no, me, I'm comfortable with that. And it wasn't, too, it wasn't too much of an adjustment. Or having this taller fighter, did you see something new add to your, to your uh, weapons, if you will? See? <coughs> Oh, yes, yes. It's it, the first time I'm I, 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 I fighting against uh, a guy really taller than me. So I never seen me with, uh, with this kind of opponent. So of course, we're going we're gonna to see something new of me. Excellent. Thank you and good luck Saturday. Thank you, man. Who's going to win today, Portugal or France in the Euros? Ah yeah, we will see. <laughs> I think I think um, it's an offer to pass it by the camera. <laughs> I think yeah, I think uh, the French team gonna do something well, and I think we're gonna we're gonna have this this, this cup. But first time at uh, at twelve, we have a big match against uh, Portugal. This is a revenge. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Well, not to, uh, December setback, you know, not, not what you wanted, but against a very talented guy. I mean, I'm just curious kind of what you, what you thought of that fight, that performance. Uh, first of all, I'm going to try to speak in English. I, I, I'm going to 
speak wrong, but I will try my best. Uh, in December, uh, I had a very tough opponent, Fiziev, and I was feeling very good. I was doing good at striking, but I got too comfortable, you know, in his area. But uh, I think, looking back, I think I, I should have be more focused and not get so confident against a, a really good striker. But, I mean, he, 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 he did his thing. Congratulations to him. And Saturday, it's going to be a, 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 another Renato Moicano. I like it. Uh, six months between now and then, was that a good amount of time? Did you want some time off, or are you kind of surprised it took six months to get another fight? No, uh, I was knocked out, so I thought, like, at least three months to come back, and after that, they offered me the fight, and I accept like always, like I always do. And I'm really excited, and I'm really happy to fight here in Las Vegas next Saturday. Nice. What's the focus been like in the time since? Has it been on more mental training, uh, you know, staying focused, or has it been physical? Mm, I think everything, you know, because I always try to to evolve in all, all areas of the, the sport. And that's what I'm doing all my life. I have been training since I was 11. And I think like this is, this, this six months, I can, I can show in next Saturday a lot of improvements. And that's what I'm planning to do, you know? So I did all, all trainings, all trainings, to get more focus, to get more better at striking, better at grappling. And I feel I'm getting better. Nice. I feel like you're trying to take all of our jobs. I saw you do an interview with Adriano Marias. Are, are you trying to? Are you trying to come after our jobs too? You know what? I'm, I like so much to to talk about MMA. So I decided to try to spread my word out. You know, to to and I have a lot of friends who are world champion, like Adriano himself. And it was a really good time for me. And I wish one day I could do like some interviews in English too. I'm trying to get better in English, so one day it's a possibility. Your English is crushing it, man. It's really, really good. Thank you so much. Talk about this matchup. Jai Herbert, kind of a newer name to the organization. Did you know much about him when you got the fight? Yes, because uh, I watched his fight in Abu Dhabi, and he was doing really good, so really tough guy, really good striker, well-rounded, and I respect him. You know, I think he's a tough athlete, but... I trust in myself. I trust in my abilities. So uh, next Saturday is gonna is gonna be me. Nice. Last thing for me. I mean, you want to go here. I'm sure you want to win. But are there any other goals that you want to accomplish here? Like, are you trying to prove something or or show anything in particular? Always. You know, I always try to prove I'm the best in the world. You know, I I, I don't. It doesn't matter if people don't don't think about. But every day when I go to sleep, I feel man, I'm the best in the world, and that's what I'm planning to show on Saturday, the best version of Renato Moicano. And I know one day I'm going to be in, in the top of the world. Yeah. Well done. Bro, the English is Thank you. Get it there. Like, it's on point.
Good morning. Andre, welcome back. It's been uh, it's been eight months at this point, so I'm just curious, did, did you need some time off? Because knowing you, I know that you probably would have been back like the next week if you could have. I did not need any time off, and if anyone's listening, Sean Shelby or anybody else, I please, God, don't give me any more time off. I don't want, I don't need, I didn't need time off then, I don't need time off now. Uh, I want to stay as active as possible for anybody listening. I just want to fight like four or five times a year. I'd fight every two months if I could. Is it tough for you to like survive without fighting? I mean, is it, is it difficult for you to stay focused or is it just, just tough? It's not, difficult, it's not difficult to stay focused. I'm just entering my prime as a, an athlete and as an adult man, and I want to put on performances. I love, I love fighting. I love fist fighting. And I'm an adult now. I got a mortgage to pay. <laughs> like, I'm trying to get paid, bro. Like, um, I, I just love to fight. I love to put on a show. Um, I, really, I really love fighting. And, you know, doing it twice a year, I just it doesn't do it for me. I, I really want to be more active. And, and it's been frustrating. I don't, I don't really know what to do to make that happen. Uh, I've come off big wins and been gone for six months. And I've come off... You know, tough losses. I've been gone for six months. I don't really know what the recipe is because I see guys that get to fight every every three weeks or something. Like I want to be one of those guys. But um, after this win Saturday, hopefully, then I get to jump right back in. Nice. You talk about frustrating losses. Last one out. Uh, any lessons you can take out of it, or things you can take to to improve your career? I mean, obviously, a talented guy. Yeah, tough dude. Bryce Mitchell's a tough dude. Uh, he had a good game plan. Um, a lot of lessons to take from that. Worked with my wrestling coach Danny Castillo a bunch on on. Uh, fixing some bad habits, which I think is what lost me the fight. Um, I, I, I go back and watch that fight, and it's frustrating because, you know, like, I didn't get beat up. I, like, look at that fight. Like, you, you watch the end of that fight, and I get up like, sorry, guys, like, shrug my shoulders. He gets up with blood all over his face like he just went through a, a, a horror movie, you know. I, I feel like I did the damage, and, like, I, I don't think you'll ever see me in a fight where like I get really beat up or where I, I don't do damage to my opponent or I don't win the actual fight. But, you know, he played a better game than me and, and hats off to him. It's, it's a frustrating fight because I left the cage feeling like I didn't actually get to fight. Like I felt warmed up, felt ready to go. It was like, all right, he got me. He took me down, held me down a little bit. You know, all right, let's, let's, let's fight now. Let's go for real. But it's like that's all you get is those 15 minutes. So a lot of lessons to be learned. And... Um, excited to come back better you know and and I've never I never had a boring fight and I've never really fought anybody who's a slouch I've never had a give me fight in the UFC so um you know tough opponents tough losses but I've had some big wins too and I'm just excited to come back and be better nice like I said you're a guy that's in exciting fights Daniel Pineda a guy that's been in exciting fights when this was the matchup I know you probably would have taken anybody but did this one appeal to you because on paper it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun yeah um I, I think a lot of guys get up here and they try to downplay their opponent you know he's never seen anyone like me he's blah blah when I look at Daniel Pineda I know I, I, I killers recognize killers I know I know I know who he is I've never met him before and I know who he is he's dangerous and that's good because it brings out the most dangerous side of me and I'm, I'm more dangerous than he is I think I'm more dangerous than anybody in this division and I'm excited to prove it so a matchup like this it brings out the best of me Nice. I know you have goals of being a world champion, and that's where you want to be. But, I mean, do you take any solace in where you stand that you have a reputation that, like, people know if you're in there, we're getting a fight? Yeah. Um, it's not something I want to hang my hat on. You know, I don't, like to, I don't like to hold on to small victories, you know, like, well, I almost did this or, I, you know, like, that's not really my style. But it is it – is, I take pride in, in the fact that people know when I'm in a fight, it's not going to be boring. It's going to be exciting. And people are going to be on their feet and people are going to be yelling and screaming. There's going to be blood and, and, and screaming. And, and, and it's going to be a fight, right? I'm not, I don't, at, at the highest level, you have to play the game a little bit. But for me, I take pride in not playing the game of MMA as much as actually going and getting in a fight and winning a fight and seeing who's the better fighter. And there's a couple people that are still like that in the sport who are, who are real fighters, and I take pride in being one of them, for sure. Yeah. You talk about playing the game a little bit, I mean, staying active. You know, do you think it's calling people out? Do you, think it's, do you think it's having something on the mic when you get done and knowing exactly the name to call? I don't know. Maybe. I, I'm, I'm, I think for a guy who, who, who's been in fist fights since he was 14 years old, like, I'm pretty eloquent. I feel like I communicate pretty effectively. Like, I'm good on a mic. Maybe I just got to start calling people out or saying a bunch of corny shit because I see dudes doing a bunch of corny shit that gets a bunch of attention. 
I, I can't do it. I can't sell my soul. Like I can't I can't do corny shit consistently over and over just to get retweets and attention and, and whatever. I don't know. I, I don't know what I got to do. I, I thought that getting in exciting fights would be enough to get me back in here every two or three months. But, um, yeah, I, I'm not going to change who I am. I'm just going to keep doing what I do and get better at it. And, um, you know, the real will always shine through, I think. The, the, the real will outlast the fake. No doubt. Last thing for me, I mean, you said you know exactly what you're in for, what kind of guy is, is there. So what's the goal? I mean, obviously you want to walk away with the win, but, I mean, is it going there and, and, and dominate somebody and shut them down, or is it going there and put on one of those wars that you know people like? I mean, what's, what's the goal for you? I don't think it's mutually exclusive. I think you can do both. I think you can put on a fight at the night and a performance at the night in the same fight. Um, I'm here for three checks, period. I'm here for three checks. I'm here for my show, my show money, my win money, and some bonus money, and, and that's that. Yeah. So, you don't have to name any names, but give me an example of the corniest shit that's in your mind recently. <sighs> or name names. I'll, I'll, give, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, I have, I have a huge respect. I have a huge deal of respect for what the uh, what Logan and Jake Paul have done. Um, what Logan and Jake Paul have done in the short amount of time with the. Sh- very small amount of combat sports experience they have. I respect the way they self-promote. Like that's that's. I respect the way they do that. They also really take a deep step into cornball territory. And to play devil's advocate, because they do corny shit. In response, a bunch of MMA fighters do corny shit. Like I see people who have no like I see people where it's just like you know damn well you're not going to get the the Logan Paul fight but you're on Twitter like fucking just everything I can say to try to respond to this guy like it's like corny shit and then it breeds more corny shit and then we have a bunch of random people in the street going oh how do you feel about this fight with a fucking guy that doesn't fight you're like it's just like bro we've like forgot what fight we forgot what fighting is like there's so much corny shit um you know so I see it from guys in the MMA community I see it from guys in the boxing community it's like become more about hype than about fight, and uh, that's the opposite of me. I like hype. I like I like I like hype, but I also like fighting too, like real fighting too. And um, I don't know. I just think there's a, a culture. F- fighting will always be a fucking circus. Like it'll always be. You can you can do whatever sponsors and whatever uniforms and whatever you want, but it'll always be a little bit real sport and a little bit pro wrestling, and that's what's beautiful about it. But sometimes the the pro wrestling, sometimes the gimmick side of the sport takes over, and and I think that's happened a lot recently. Does that only get reset when those two get knocked out? Do you think? Not reset. It's always going to be around, but yeah. maybe put back into. I don't know. I'm. Not, I don't wish them any ill will. Dude, keep doing. Like, those dudes, those kids are making a lot of money. Good for them. I don't hate on any man. Do your thing. Make a bunch of money. I just. I think it's one of those things. Like, fighting is an art, and and art evolves, right? Um, I love hip hop, and I've listened like listened to hip hop since I was a little kid. Just as an example, and. You know, every generation, the generation before goes, oh, this is trash. This is trash. This is trash. But there's good hip-hop and there's trash hip-hop from the time it started until now, right? It's the same as this. This is an art form. There's going to be cultural shifts. We're in one right now where people talk more than fight and people do stupid antics on YouTube videos and do, do this and call out people they, have, they know damn well they're not going to fight. It's just, it's just kind of where we're at in this part of in this stage of our art form, you know what I mean? So we just need a Twitter cap. Some people only get to tweet three times a week <laughs> yeah. and have to use it really properly. Um, yeah. You mentioned about not being able to fight regularly. Is that the biggest downside of this career? You know, you get to do what you love maybe three times a year if yeah. you're lucky. You know, Is that the biggest downside to this? Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, I'm, I'm turning into a real adult finally. I bought a house. I'm doing this. I'm, you know, like I want to I want to start having a family in the next couple of years and uh, my girlfriend owns a business and we were doing our taxes and we're comparing our like QuickBooks, you know, and she's got like, she, she's got a paycheck every two weeks. And then I, and I show her mine. I'm like, this is why fighting is stressful. <laughs> this is why fighting is stressful. Cause I have three fucking paydays in a whole fiscal year. Yeah. Right. And yeah, they jump up high for sure. Thank God. Like I, I make good money now and I'm, I'm thankful for it, but there's only three on the, on the, on the on the Excel spreadsheet, it's a pretty simple one. It's literally three ticks. Like I got paid 
in January, I got paid on Halloween, and I'm going to get paid three checks on Saturday. Like, for an app, for, for that, if you, if you talk to a regular person and go, hey, um, I haven't had a real paycheck since Halloween night, and it's the start of summer. Like, that's fucking stressful. You know what I mean? Um, I grew up in the sport, so I feel like I manage it pretty well. But, yeah, it'd be nice to have a few more of those blips on the radar when I do my taxes at the end of the year, not just three paychecks. The paychecks get bigger. Thankful for that, but, you know, getting paid three times a year and getting to perform three times a year. And for me, I'm like, I want to cement a legacy. I, I still think of myself as a guy who could be a household name, like could really be one of the greatest to ever do this. And, and I, I have that self-belief, and I think you need that to be a, a good fighter. But to be able to do that, i got to capitalize on these opportunities. If there's only win, lose, or draw, if you're only fighting twice – three times a year, it's hard to do that, you know? So I, I really want to be more active. Yeah. Is the answer to that just being one of those guys who takes a fight on a week's notice every time, you know? Like the Kevin Hollands of the world who just show up whenever? I, I don't know. I mean, Kevin Holland did a really good job this past year. Like, shout out to him, man. He, he really did a good job of getting himself in the cage, and he made a bunch of money and made a real name for himself. I don't know. It worked out for him mostly, um, but for every Kevin Holland, you've seen a lot of guys who it didn't work out for. Um taking short notice fights. I've seen a lot of guys who are really talented um, take not smart fights with not enough time to prepare and cut their career short. So it's, it's, a, it's a tricky thing. I don't think there's a – the older I get, the more I realize, like, for most of these things, there's not a one-size-fits-all one answer, right? You have to really know yourself and know your situation. And um, I don't think there's a, a – I don't think, for me, taking a fight every week is, is the smart thing. I think for me, taking a fight every two or three months against exciting opponents that people get hyped about, you know, like this is, is the answer. That's my, that's my answer. Cool. Last one from me, big fight coming up, Connor versus Dustin three. How does it, how does it go? Break it down. Uh, when Connor and Dustin fight, I will be in my backyard getting drunk with my friends and I'll be watching the fight like a fan. I, I have, the, I have a, a lot of respect for both those guys. I don't, I'm not really a guy that makes predictions. I'm focused on my fight. I'm going to win my fight. That's it. By the time I watch, especially guys who aren't on my team, like a big fight like Connor and Dustin, I'm going to be in my backyard or on my couch watching it just as excited as everybody else. Like, um, Yeah, I have a great deal of respect for what Connor's done in this sport. Like, uh, I really, really respect Connor. Like, he – He's I, yeah, high tide raises all ships. He's done a lot for the sport. Um, Dustin is a dude that I have a great deal of respect for because he's a fighter's fighter. When I look at that dude, I'm like, nothing given, everything earned. He's a fucking man. Like he he's battled his way through the sport and uh, actually is inspiring to me because it you know it took him. He took the long road to a belt. He took the long road to being a household name. You know, and that's something I think my career is sort of following that same path. So. I really, I like, I know it's, a, it's not the answer you're looking for, but I like both dudes, and I hope both dudes get a big, fat fucking paycheck and fight five more times, whatever. Like, I just want the best for guys like that. Like, say whatever you want about Connor, say whatever you want about Dustin. They're both real fighters, um, and I hope they get all the money in the world from, from fighting. Like, I just wish them the best. That's it. Thank you.
But they will speak in Russian because I have a translator with me. You don't need it. It will be. Yeah, he, but he's lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I speak English, I'm so wet. So today I'm a little bit relaxed. <laughs> nice. Well, Alexander, your your last fight was a you know performance of the night over a legend. I'm just curious, kind of you know what kind of confidence that gave you, or what you took out of that fight. Последняя твоя победа над Аверимом дала тебе ну, большой буст. Что это значит для тебя эмоционально и прибавило ли это тебе уверенности? It means for me a lot, for sure. Uh, it was a great fight for me, a great performance. But I'm looking forward, uh, and I, I don't think right now about my old uh, wins, like I, I told every time. I'm just looking for a future and now. Uh, instead of me, a really great fighter, Cyril Gunn, he's a great striker, he is undefeated. Um, uh, and uh, I'm really excited to see my striker skills against him. Nice. It seems like you have a lot of respects for Cyril. When you got this matchup, w were you excited by it or, or were you surprised? Because he's kind of a newer name in the division versus one of the more established people. Что ты подумал, когда ну, тебе предложили этот бой? Был бы ли ты рад? Ну, в принципе, Сирил не очень известный, но ты выказываешь ему столько уважения. Почему? Ну и как ты себя почувствовал, когда тебе предложили этот бой? Um, probably I, I'm more excited with it because uh, I, I'm looking for him. He, he's a really good striker and. Uh, one time I feel like I, 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 I am, uh, meet him anyway, so I think it's a good time for, for both of us. We, I, I uh, want to fight uh, with anybody who uh, uses his striking skills but not a wrestling or <laughs> something. <laughs> and that's why it's a, it's a good uh, uh, fight for me. Um, anyway, I hope he will not go to wrestling after uh, some punching and hit him and we will uh, uh, continues this fight in, in the stand-up. <laughs> uh, obviously, he lacks the experience that you have. I mean, it's, at heavyweight, does experience play as much of a role, uh, or is it not as much because you know one punch can end a fight at, at any time in the heavyweight division? Что ты думаешь, насколько важен опыт? Но он не такой опытный, как ты. Но так ли важен опыт в тяжелом весе? Ведь любой удар может закончить это все в любой момент. Experience is meant a lot, uh, but he is uh, like um, uh, have uh, physically, uh, uh, psychically he feeling more free because he uh, don't have lose. He, he he wasn't in a really uh, hard fights, uh, and I'm understanding what can happen uh, in this long uh, hard fights. He don't understand right now. And uh, in this case, I have more uh, advertising of him because uh, I, uh, I was in a different situation and I uh, uh, came up from this to, to the win, but he, he, but he uh, never feels this in the fight. So in this case, I have more advertising, uh, advertising of, of him, uh, but we'll see how it will go in the fight. Uh, does this feel like a, a big fight for you, a big moment for you? Because, you know, you've had some big wins, and then right when you get to the top, you, you slip back down a little. So does this feel like a big fight for you? Um, every fight I'm feeling like it's a big fight for me. Because I'm, I'm trying to uh, motivate, motivate myself in, in this way. Uh, for me, every fight is a, is a my top-ranking fight uh, in, in all my career. This way I'm growing up. Uh, you know, it's, it's a good fight for, for fans, uh, for sure. Uh, this fight, if, if, if it came in, 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 uh, in a way, uh, I think it will be one of the best fights in, in maybe this year. So because it's too big, uh, really high level uh, striking fighter, uh, and it's going to be a really, really interesting fight. Nice. Last thing for me. I mean, the title picture right now is really busy. There's a lot of contenders. So are you thinking about where this puts you in relation to a title shot, or is this just about picking up another win and, and staying on a winning streak? <clears throat> we will see. Uh, right now, I don't want to, to look uh, uh, 
after this fight. Uh, but we'll see how, how it will be, but uh, for sure if it, this, this fight will be uh, really, if it will be a good, perf good performance in this fight, uh, for sure, I, I will be one of, of, of the contenders. I, I'm now one, one of the contenders for sure, but we'll see what will be after fight, what will, what will be after fight Ngannou and Yuri, if, if, if it uh, uh, will. Uh, so, I don't know right now, just, just now I'm thinking just about Cyril Gunn. I don't want to, to look forward uh, uh, behind him. Do you think the fact that both you and Cyril are giants and the fact that you're in a small cage will help the excitement of the fight? The cage is not so small. Uh, f uh, f I think it's uh, it's smaller than the, the, the uh, original gauge for, for fighting, but it's it, it's also big. Uh, I think it doesn't matter for, for us for sure because both of us want to to uh, finish this fight uh, by the. Uh, knockout or something. We will see how, how it goes uh, because I'm looking uh, in this fight to, to, to go forward.
I guess, does, uh, does heavyweight make for a better fight week? Is it, a, is it a little bit easier to not have to think about weight cutting at all? I mean, I, to be honest, I was looking forward for the weight call, weight cut. Um, I was telling people last Tuesday, I weighed in at 223, so the weight cut was going to be like, I would have came in, two, I would have came in yesterday about like 219, so the weight cut would have been easy for me. But, you know, given the last minute opponent change, I even thought about it for a minute. I was like, when uh, my manager, Oren, presented me the, the heavyweight offer, I was like, no. And then I slept on it for a night, woke up the next day, and I was like, all right, I can do that. Yeah, I wondered about that. Like, when, when the opponent changed up, did you start saying, well, maybe this isn't the you know, right thing for me? Um, not necessarily. Like I said, I tell people, people always ask me, like, would you go back to the heavyweight division? I was like, if an opportunity presented itself, I would entertain it. The fact of the matter is, like, for my first heavyweight fight, I fought Big Ben. And, you know, I was thinking to myself, like, during weigh-ins, I was like, ah, oh, he don't look that big. Then we got in the octagon, and I was like, oh, shoot, he's, 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 actually, pretty, he's actually pretty big. And, um, like, you don't realize, like, those guys are really, really hard to move. Like, you can move them probably the first or second time, but then after that, it's just it, it, they hard to move. So, you know, given that, you know, Tanner's not a bigger heavyweight, I was like, yes, I'm going to entertain this possibility. All right, so you're ruling it out moving forward, or we're just we're done with that? Yeah. All right, nice. What do you think about the matchup here? I mean, obviously, <laughs> it is a late switch up. I mean, did you think about the stylistic? I mean, did that, did that factor into your decision? Um, it did. Um, he, he, he's definitely more of an active heavyweight on his feet. Like, you know, throws a lot of kicks, throws a lot of punches. He moves well. Um, his ground game is kind of like kind of up in the air, but other than that, he, he, and he hits hard too. I know he's never been finished, um, so that's the thing that uh, I, I got to watch out for. If I clip him, I just can't jump on him right away because I know he's not one of the guys that's going to end up, you know, um, being finished or whatnot. But also, too, um, even with that heavyweight division, I think my power transfers over pretty well in the heavyweight division. So I think I think it's going to be one of those fights where even he was like, okay, he's coming up from a light heavyweight division. I'm going to try to pressure him. I think if I can put my hands on him, he'll – He'll probably take a step back and be like, okay, you got a little bit of power. Nice. Um, he, I don't know if you've interacted with him, but he's like really pissed off. He's coming in with like a chip on his shoulder. Not at you, but he's just got like this chip on his shoulder. Do you, have you seen that from him at all? And does, like, does that factor in anything? Um, it don't. I mean, it, it don't at all. It's just like I'm just going to go there and do my job. It's just like, I mean, I never met the guy before, so he can't be pissed off at me. If he want to take it out on me, so be it. It's not going to be easy. So, if anything, it might be worse for him anyways. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Do you think, like, maybe you could take advantage? I was, like, almost wonder if you kind of want to get up in his face at the, at the face-offs or something to try to mess with him a little bit just to get his temper way out of line. I mean, that's not my personality, but at the end of the day, like, if you get in my face, I'm not going to back out at all. Nice. Last thing for me, I guess, what kind of fight are you expecting here? I mean, it seems like it could be kind of a, a fun one, kind of a, a left field one, you know. So what, what kind of fight do you expect here? Um, don't know. Like, I, I would say how we want to finish the fight, but every time I say that, like, the fight just get – I finish the fight in a, in, a, in a whole different fashion. So, you know, I just want to be excited and fight and um, put myself back on the win track. Amen. Because of his size, is this basically like a light heavyweight fight that you both aren't cutting weight for? Because he's probably about the same size as you. Uh, probably so, but I'm more of a light heavyweight than he is. <laughs> so you can, you can look at a body type, I'm more of a light heavyweight than he is. When you fought Ben, did you know that night that, okay, I'm not experimenting with these bigger guys anymore, like they're just too tough to move around? Um, there's, a, there's a difference between like not experimenting with him. It's just like, you know, with the heavyweight division, when you jump into a... a, a when you jump into a different weight class, when you go up, you want to fight one of the smaller guys within that weight class. I fought one of the bigger guys within that weight class. I also fought one of the guys who fought seven champs in that weight class. So that lets you know he's been around for a really, really long time. But even with that, it's just like you kind of experience now. But like, okay, that's when you kind of realize size does make a difference. Is it a tough division to jump into as well? Because you can get a guy at 230, but you can also get a guy at 265, right? There's a big variety well, there. It's not even 265. He's a guy that's 280 that cuts down to 265. Yeah. That's a big difference. Yeah, fair enough. Thank you. Uh, thanks for taking the time, OSP. If, if you hypothetically win or a good performance, are we sticking around to heavyweight or it was just the opportunity presented itself, like you said? Opportunity presented itself by trade. I am a light heavyweight, 
But if the opportunity presents itself, I will entertain the heavyweight division. And that's excellent because that gives you opportunity to get two checks instead of one. You know, you could go back and forth. How's 205? Once you head back down there, what are the names you would be looking at? Or how's, how's that landscape for you? Um, it really doesn't matter. I mean, you know, at this point in time, it's just like I felt like even this fight against uh, uh, Maxim, he was a really good fight. You know, he's, a, he, he's definitely active. He's one of those guys that's been around for a really long time, like his style. And he's one of the bigger 205 pounders, too. Um, so I was looking forward to a really entertaining fight, but things happen, so, and I can't complain about that. Thank you, sir. Good luck Saturday. Thank you.
been a, a, a pretty good start to your UFC career so far. I'm just curious if this is going kind of exactly the way you envisioned. How are you, brother? Good? Good, good. Yeah. I mean, man, I mean, I mean, inside my dream, you know? So, one more is a turf one UFC, and just think about this one. And I'm prepared. I, I did a good camp. So, let's go. Let's go. Nice. And you're kind of in a featured spot here on the, on the card. You know, you're doing the media. You're on the main card. Does this feel like kind of a, a, a big fight for you? Yes, of course it is. But I don't think about a lot about this, you know. So, it's important, but it's not my main thought about. So, now what matters is I'm going to fight and I have my focus and just this. Yeah. You, you had a change of opponent. A um, couple of things. Number one, it goes from a veteran to kind of a newcomer. You know, I wonder how much that changes things. And then also, I would think two totally different body types, too. Yeah. So, I mean, how much did this opponent change affect your preparation? Uh, we, we have time because they changed the opponent a couple weeks ago. So, I had time to study, watch the, his fights. And, of course, change. It's completely different than Eddie Herman. But it's a little similar than my last one. And the softball guy, tall guy, is a good for, for my game. I think it's, it, it is what it is, so I have to accept. I have time to study, to train, and I'm okay with it. It's no problem. Was there any hesitation or discussion about, ah, maybe, maybe this is not the right opponent for us? No, I just question why Edge Ham was out, you know, he's out, why he's out. But they said, Something, I said, okay, let's go. Yeah. Did it disappoint you at all? Because obviously Ed's been around forever, man. You beat a, a, a name like that, it kind of means something. Not that it wouldn't mean something to beat Kennedy, but you know, those, those names. Uh, this camp for me was like a big one. I helped Fabrizio, I helped Marvin three months. So I trained a lot for Eddie Herman. And of course, I, I, a little disappointed. Oh my God, uh, I had my game. I, I, so, like I said, it is what it is. I have to accept because it's a good fight for me, too. So, um, I don't want to think about this, you know. Just keep my focus at the Kennedy and let's go. Nice. What do you think about Kennedy as an opponent? His last fight, a lot of trouble, but obviously he came back and won. So, what did you take watching that fight? I think it was a, a, like a K-1 fight or a Muay Thai fight. So, it's completely different than the MMA fight. And that's my point, you know. I just uh, I look more for other ones. I guess the I forget the, I forgot the names. Uh, Croatian guy I think and there's Paul Craig. So that's mean more for me because the MMA fights. So that's my point. Nice. And you have a pretty decent cornerman for your uh, fight this time, uh, Damian Maya in your corner. Not not bad, huh? Oh no, he's good. Yeah. <laughs> I will learn a lot from him. A long time, bro. Is that, is, it, is that safe to say when you bring Damian Maia into your corner, the, the, the jiu-jitsu is going to be front and center in the game yeah, plan? That, that's fine, sir. Damian Maia in my corner, I have to represent very well, but I will do my best. Nice. Do my best. Last thing for me, talk about the goals here. I mean, is it just simply win, or do you feel like this is a moment where you can make like a statement and show people that, hey, like I'm, I'm the real deal? Mm -hmm. uh, I waited a long time to get in UFC, so I just think about the moment. When I think out so far, you know, that makes me a little confused. I prefer to think about the moment. That's my, my game. So that's better for me. Amen. When you prepare for someone as long as you did for Ed, does this mean this fight is always going to be one you want to actually do? Because you put the preparation and you made the game plan. So does that mean you will always want to fight him one day? Uh, no. I don't know. I think he's... Uh, I prepared for Eddie Herman, uh, I, really do, I really did, but uh, when that changed, I changed my mind, you know, so I forgot about him, I forget about him, and I keep my focus in a new one. One day, we, we never know, maybe I can, I can have an opportunity against him again, well, it would be good, so I, I know him very well because I study a lot, I train a lot for him, so let's see, let's see. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Dan, thanks for taking the time. They could change the name. They could change the arena. One thing we can't change is the, that time. How does fighting a little earlier affect your conditioning, acclimating, such? Yeah, that's, that's good because I, 
I knew I want to fight 26 a long time, so I keep my training, my fox in, in that day. And of course, they can change the opponent, they can change everything, but the date, 26, they stay, that's uh, really, really good. And like I said for him, my, my camp was so long, different than others. And I helped my friends, they helped me, and so they fogged. I, I keep waiting, and now, now I'm here. So it's good. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Good luck, Saturday. Thank you, brother. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.
Joe, I was wondering if you could talk to me about kind of what the last year and a half or so has been like for you, right? I mean, you, you, you uh, made your dream of getting here, but you've had these cancellations and the sickness and, and, and a loss along the way. So what's, what's this whole experience been like? Oh, it's been crazy, man. It's been a bit of a whirlwind, you know what I mean? Um, but I'm here now and I'm, you know, looking to perform. I've, I've had a lot of time off, but I've had a lot of time to, you know, prepare and, um, you know, get better, work on things that I need to work on and I'm um, looking to, you know, show you uh, my new self, you know, new um, everything that I've been working on, I get to show uh, Saturday night and it's going to be a, it's going to be a great performance. How was the, the, the debut versus your expectations as far as just the overall experience? I mean, was it uh, different than you expected? Um, you know, it was kind of weird in a way, you know, I was, as I was walking out, it was like a dream come true, I was so happy, and then, but another way, I was like really nervous and like, you know, this is, this is crazy, man, like I remember watching this, uh, you know, years and years ago, watching the UFC, and now I'm actually finally here, you know what I mean, and uh, doing what I love, so, you know, it was mixed emotions, but um, I've got it out of the wave now, and now, now I'm here, you know, um, to, do, to do the job. Nice, and the cancellation, I mean, you, you did actually test positive for COVID, right, did you have any issues with it? Yeah, like I say, when I was meant to fight Jack a closer, and three weeks before, I tested positive for uh, COVID. I was ill for like a week or so. Obviously, to, in England, you have, to, you have to stay in your house for like two weeks. Um, so I couldn't train or do anything. I was quite ill. So it took me quite a while, you know, to get back to um, full, um, you know, more full uh, training and everything. And, but, you know, we're here now and everything happens for a reason. So I'm here to, to you know, to put on a good show. Yeah. Is that crazy? Because I mean, you're I mean, you're an athlete in your prime or whatever. Did it affect you a lot more than you thought maybe it would? Um, not not necessarily. Um, it, it did affect me, but you know, um, I just I just just I did have to do my thing, man. I mean, I'm an athlete in my prime. I'm still getting better, man. I still feel I feel I feel like I'm getting faster, sharp. I'm, re I'm reacting better, and you know, I'm, I just feel I'm getting better and better. Even though I'm getting older, I just I just feel great, man. <laughs> Nice. So talk about this matchup with Hinato. Obviously, he's been in the, the league for a while. I mean, what, what, what do you think of his game and, and his skills? Um, you know, he's a, he's a great fighter. You know, he's, um, he's had a lot of fights against the top, top guys, the best in the, uh, the featherweight division. Um, yeah, so, you know, I know he's going to be a tough guy. He's going to be well-rounded in every area. Great jiu-jitsu, good striking, um, good, good conditioning. You know, he uh, goes a distance quite a lot. Um, yeah, but I think my speed and my, my, um, my sharpness and my, my, my power is going to be a big factor in this fight and um, it's going to show Saturday night. Stylistically, it seems like it could be a pretty exciting fight. Do you allow yourself to have that mindset, like this could be a lot of fun, or do you feel like, no, i got to go in there and dominate? I don't have that mindset. I, like, you know, it's all about, you know, um, not getting hit and, you know, getting <laughs> hitting the guy, you know what I'm trying to say? So I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to have no war with no one. I'm trying to go in there and put him away real quick, you know what I mean? I ain't trying to stand there and bang with you. I'm trying to, like bang you out, you know what I mean? That's how it's going to go. Yeah. Mentally, does it feel any different right now? I mean, I guess you won't know until Saturday, you know, how you react. But, I mean, does it feel different this time around? Because I know the, the journey here, the expectations were all upon you. I mean, do you feel more comfortable this time around? A hundred percent. I feel a lot more comfortable. I think it's, it's due to my preparation um, this time compared to last time. You know, um, the preparation has been great, man. I've done everything right, everything correct. Training has been great, you know, so... That's given me a lot of confidence going into this fight, and I feel, you know, I feel a lot of confidence, and um, I can't wait to, to show it. Nice. And last thing for me, obviously you want to win, and you just said the goal is to hit and not get hit, you know, but do you feel like you need to go out there and, and make some kind of a statement or, or, or kind of erase the, the last performance for people's minds? Yeah, I feel, you know, there is that in the back of the mind, you know, you want to put on a good performance, but I feel like I did that in my first fight. I think I was trying a bit too hard. I was in there, I was trying everything, I was trying a bit too hard, you know, now I feel I'm a bit more relaxed. I'm gonna, you know, be compo um, uh, you know, show composure, and um, look to dominate. How do you feel about England playing Germany in the next? <laughs> my guy, I can't believe we got Germany. No. Oh my God. We, we got Germany off friends. It's Germany at the moment. Germany. Oh my. What did they win today? Germany. Yeah. It's still going on. It's draw two two. What's the uh, France get France score? Uh, two two. Oh, is it okay? So at the moment, France and lead the group, then Germany. Mate, it's Germany or France. We're in trouble, innit? Come on, let's be honest. <laughs> um, but look, I hope that. Um, yeah, listen. If we if he plays, if he plays for the top boys in that for that game, I think I think we could. Do, you know, we could do, we could do the job. Let's have hope, man. You know, it's coming home. It's coming home. It's coming. You know what I mean? I bet you Americans don't know that song, do you? <laughs> I think they had to hear it at the World Cup over and over to be fair. Good? Yeah. Wicked. Thanks. Thanks, guys.
Daniel, obviously last time we saw you, kind of a, a crazy one. I know it didn't necessarily go your way, but uh, I guess what did you take out of that? You know, your performance lessons, anything like that? Uh, fix my diet. I got to fix my diet. Yeah, I had a real bad, uh, well, I had a bad diet. So has that been like your whole career or just in that particular stretch of time? Or? I mean, I've had bad diets, but it's just I, I didn't do it right this last fight. So for this fight, you know, I took it more serious. Nice. So I, I saw that you were focusing on your nutrition and that sort of thing. So what, what's, what's it been like? And is that the reason it's been six months? Has that been, was that the reason to take some time off? Yeah. I mean, I'm guessing like, you know, a couple of little injuries there and there. But, uh, yeah, just a diet, trying to get right. And, uh, you know, I wasn't really expecting to fight. Like, I wasn't in a fight, and they called it up. So, I mean, it's a good fight. Nice. You know, I, it's funny because I, I feel like nutrition and diet seem like the last thing that gets dialed in for a lot of fighters. Like, why is that? Do you know? Is it just something you just don't think is important to, to, to some degree? Yeah, I mean, I'm guessing I'm Mexican. I eat a lot of Mexican food. <laughs> so... Yeah, I, I don't need healthy at all, you know. As soon as the fight's over, I pig out. So what's the, what's the diet been like? Uh, I guess not many tortillas or rice and beans. I mean, what's, what, 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 what are they taking away from you? Uh, a lot of that. A lot of peaks, a lot of Mexican food, a lot of, yeah, the good food. Is it, is it painful to, to do this? I mean, is it, like, change the process? Is it not enjoyable? Uh, it sucks, you know, but, you know, I can do it for three weeks, you know, three weeks of a diet, so we're good. Nice. All right, we'll talk about the matchup that you have now. Andre Feely looks like it could be a – on paper, it looks like it's a lot of – I mean, almost all your fights are fun, but this looks like it should be a good one. So what did you think when they gave you this name? Man, I, you know, uh, what I like is that they didn't throw me somebody – you know, when I lost to Cub, they didn't throw somebody in the 50s or, you know, they gave me somebody up there, you know, ranked up there. So he's a top guy. He's had a lot of fights, and he's an exciting fighter. And I think, you know, that's the kind of fights I like. I like those exciting fights. I don't like somebody's just going to run away. Somebody's going to just take me down and hold me down. It's you're going to whoop my ass, I'm going to whoop your ass. One of them, too. Let's say, do you, can you take pride in a reputation like that? Like, you know, people know that when you step in there, it's going to be an exciting fight. Does that, do you take pride in that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm going to go in there and try to finish it. I don't want to go in there and have a war. You know, like, I don't like wars. I, I want to go in there. I want to finish everybody. So, yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I like it, you know. I like fighting. So with this new diet, I mean, can you fight more frequently or less frequently, or is, is, does it change anything? Duh. Man, it, it just – I like to fight. So I think I want to fight more. You know, I just – I took some time off. I mean, like I'm saying, everything that's going on, I wish my next fight was with fans. You know, I wanted fans in my next fight. So this fight with fans would have been perfect. So the next one you want to be on a on a pay per view card and make sure you got you got fans in there. Yes, yeah, whenever all this COVID stuff comes down, then we can just freaking get some fans in there and fight. Do you feed off that? Because I think we all try to try to understand it. You know, as media members watch. I mean, can that really have an impact on your performance? Big time. Yeah, big time. We're not gonna have my fans in there, my family, everybody watching me, cheering me on. It's like, you know, it gets you going. It gets freaking fire lit under your ass. So, yeah. That's awesome. Well, last thing for me, I mean, on, on paper, this looks like it could be a fight of the night type fight. Oh, it's uh, going to be a good fight. I was gonna say, that was, yeah. Is that what you're expecting? Oh, yeah. It's going to be a good fight, man. They chose right, and they have us in the main card, so it's going to be good. What are you expecting out of him on Saturday night? Man, I'm expecting him to come in, fight, go forward. I go forward. We're just going to, man, we're going to go in there, and we're going to try to finish each other. Do you think it's just going to be one of those fights where it's sort of high pace from the moment it starts until one of you starts to slow down? I think so. Just I like, think one of us is going to get finished quick. Yeah, like a blender where you just turn it on. It's just craziness. Yeah, it needs to be, yeah one of us is going to get finished quick. We're, we're not going to – this ain't going to be no fight of the night. This is going to be a performance of the night. Thanks, man. To be fair, he said you can get performance of the night and fight of the night, and that's what he wants to get. So. Yeah, I mean, if shit, if shit comes down to it, you know, and we go three rounds, it's going to be fight of the night because we're going to be – it's going to be a good fight. Like I said, it's going to be a good fight. Thank you guys.